right, all right, are you guys ready for another DIY repair? I've got my refrigerator here. The other day I walked, I got some milk out of it, and I took a drink and I just thought, this is not cold enough. <laughs> and so I started feeling around on other stuff in the fridge and it just wasn't quite cold. It was cool, but it wasn't quite cold. So I looked and I looked on the front of my refrigerator and you can see these numbers right here. And it's telling you what the refrigerator temperature is. This is the refrigerator, this is the freezer. So you can see the refrigerator is 55 degrees. Your refrigerator should really be 40 degrees or below. So obviously there's something wrong, but I've never done repair on refrigerators, but that's what DIY is all about. I'm gonna figure it out. I did some research, which maybe is what you guys are doing right now, and that's why you're on this video. So I'm gonna get back here. Um, from my research, it sounds like it could be the condenser cooling fan. So I'm gonna take this cover off down here. I'm gonna take a look at the condenser cooling fan, see if it's running. If it's not running, then I'm gonna get the part number and I'm gonna find a way to order it. So come back here with me. Okay, so down here on these refrigerators, um, there's this little just cardboard cover that I'm gonna have to pull off to get to where the coils and the cooling fan is at. The, the cooling fan, the condenser cooling fan, blows over the coils and that's what keeps them cool. So if it stops blowing that air over those coils, then they're not gonna be as cool. It's not gonna be able to keep your refrigerator as cold as it should be, at least for my research. So here we go. I've got a little, uh, I think this is a quarter inch socket. So I'm gonna pull these things off here. tell this really needs to be cleaned anyway. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this out of here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, so the condenser fan is running, so that may not be the problem. Um, I don't know how well you can see up in there. Let me see if I can get a little light. Okay. So there is, that's the condenser. And then you have this cooling fan that blows o over these coils. And the coils are, they're, I mean, they're pretty dusty. So um, it's obviously not the fan because the fan is working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna vacuum off. I'm gonna vacuum out this whole area. I'm gonna try and clean off those coils. I'm gonna see if that makes any difference. All right guys, so I've got my compressor running in there. What I'm gonna do is I wasn't quite sure how to clean those coils off because um, I'm not really gonna be able to get a vacuum up in there real good. So I just got my compressor. I'm gonna put a little air attachment on it. I'm gonna try and blow those coils off as best I can. It's gonna make a terrible mess, but you can hear my compressor running in there. Um, I may not actually shoot video while I'm blowing that out. I'll try to uh, if I can, just to show you guys how I'm doing it. Um, I'm sure there are other ways to do it, maybe even better ways but uh, I think blowing it off with air might be a good way, so we'll see. All right guys, so what I just did was I got my little um, handy Makita vac here, which is totally awesome by the way, um, and I vacuumed as much of the dust and stuff off these coils as I could. Now I'm gonna take my compressor with this little air attachment, and I'm just gonna try and blow all the dust off these coils. Um, after I do that, I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to see if the refrigerator starts cooling down again. Um, that was one of, one of the other things that I found um, that was suggested is to look and see if the coils needed to be cleaned off. Because obviously if they're covered with dust, you're not going to be able to cool them. That air blowing across them is not going to cool them off properly. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so cleaning the coils 
did not work. Um, I was super pumped because a few hours after I cleaned the coils, I came in, my wife said, it's cooling, and it had to drop like 15 degrees. So I was super pumped. I was going to come back on and show you guys this awesome repair. It didn't work. So, um, on with the troubleshooting. So, my fantastic, beautiful wife over here is going to plug this in, but I'm going to tell you guys what I'm doing real quick. Let me flip my camera okay so i'm currently in the freezer i removed the shelves and the ice maker um but what i'm really wanting to look at here so you have a white panel that covers this up at the very back of your freezer these are your evaporator coils so the two things now that i'm concerned with is the evaporator fan which is kind of up under here you can see it right there and the defrost thermostat, which is this little guy right here. Now, it's going to be pretty easy to figure out whether or not the evaporator fan is working. I'm going to have my wife plug in the power to the refrigerator, and the fan's either going to come on or not. If it doesn't come on, then I know I need to replace the evaporator fan. If it does come on, then I'm probably going to buy a new defrost thermostat. One of the reasons for that is because on all these coils right here when I opened this up there was just a crazy amount of frost and ice built up on there so that could be what's going on but I'm gonna go ahead and have her plug that in and we're gonna see if the fan starts running all right you can... okay okay the fan is running so that's a good thing So the evaporator fan started running. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna order a defrost thermostat. Um, when that gets messed up, it can cause cooling problems in your refrigerator. And it could be one of the reasons that all that frost and ice was built up. So I'm gonna order that. I'm gonna <laughs> get back um, and I'll get back with you guys and show you how I'm replacing that and we're gonna see if that tackles the problem. All right, two days later, I just finally got the part that maybe I need. I'm not quite sure until I put it on there. So, um, got my part from Amazon. You know, it was crazy the other night. It was about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, and um, I, I needed to order this part. And so I got on Amazon, found the part I needed, but I wasn't sure I was going to order it off there because I was like, it's 5.30 or 6. There's no way it's going to get here tomorrow. And I was thinking I'll just go to my local appliance repair store and pick up one of these parts. But it said it would be here the next day, which totally blew me away. I don't know how Amazon does this stuff. It's like magic, but I don't really care how they do it as long as they do it. So the downside is it did not come the next day. It was a day late but whatever the part was $6.99 and the appliance store wanted almost $26 for it so I saved like $20 on this part it's right here show it to you this is called a defrost thermostat um, and so it basically just kind of helps automatically defrost your freezer at least I think that's what it does I'm not 100% sure so um, new part here i'm going to get inside the freezer i'm going to show you the old part i'm going to tell you what i'm going to do show you how to do it and uh, once i get the new part on then i'm going to have to plug the refrigerator back in we're going to see if everything starts working and i'll shoot another video as to whether or not it started working and i'll probably shoot another video if it doesn't start working to tell you what my next steps will be okay guys inside the freezer right here you can see my evaporator coils um, i think i showed you those the other day but right up here is the the old defrost thermostat i haven't taken it off yet so what we're going to do is the way you replace these things is i'm actually just going to snip these two wires that connects this this thermostat onto here and i'm going to use connectors that came with my new defrost thermostat you can see these little blue connectors they're called butt connectors 
and um, you have to have a crimp tool. Uh oh, my crimp tool fell down. Let me grab it. Um, actually, these are combination wire strippers, and they also right here you can see is a crimp um, part of the tool. So not every wire strippers has the ability to crimp. I actually had to buy these the other day because I have a bunch of wire strippers, but I did not have a pair that would do uh, crimp connectors for, for butt connectors. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna take the old one out. I am going to connect the new one. I'm gonna plug this thing back in. We'll see what happens. Here we go. Here is the new thermostat. You can kind of see these are kind of pre-cut right here. For you to pull that off of there okay so it just kind of automatically strips for you but i'm gonna have to cut that old one cut the wire off that old one and then strip the wire in there so then we can use our butt connectors match up the colors put this in there put the old side in here and then we crimp it together uh, but they also sent some heat shrink um, to go over so before I put that on there, what I'll actually do is I'll put this heat shrink over these wires, then I'll do the butt connectors, I'll cover it up with the heat shrink, and then heat that up so it shrinks down over that to cover up those wires. All right, I got my new thermostat in there. It uh, clips onto that pipe, and... Uh, so I'm going to plug this thing in, I'll put my panel back on, I'm going to plug this thing in, and I'll give you guys an update. Quick update you guys, good news, the defrost thermostat works. As you can see right here, negative 2 degrees on the freezer, 37 degrees in the refrigerator. So defrost thermostat did it. I had to do a bunch of things. Uh, you saw me on the video, checked the condenser fan, cleaned the coils, checked the evaporator fan to make sure it was running, and then I did the defrost thermostat and that's what fixed it. So sometimes you gotta troubleshoot these things. I'm just glad I got it fixed. Hi guys. <laughs> um, so there you go, uh, DIY, keep at it. You can get this stuff done. It's not that hard. Uh, I got about maybe an hour of time in this. Um, not sure exactly, not much more than that. Had to wait a couple days on a part, but I only paid $7 on Amazon for this part. So I fixed this refrigerator for $7. If I hadn't hired a appliance repairman to come out here and do it, no doubt it would have been a couple hundred bucks. Uh, they probably would have had the defrost thermostat on their truck, but just to come out here, they're going to charge you a ton. So, you know, just troubleshoot some stuff. Uh, do a, you know, with the internet today, just do a Google search. You can usually find what's wrong. A lot of times, you're able to fix it a lot cheaper. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit too complicated. You're going to have to hire somebody, and that's fine. Uh, but anyway, keep at it. Um, I also have a blog about living debt-free. Um, I'll put a link to that in the comments if you guys want to check it out. All right, see ya.